Yo, peace was good. Well, it's another show my CD collection. This is part 122. Um, I just want to say a big shout out, man, to DJ Premier and RZA for that legendary um, battle um, over the weekend on Saturday. That was dope. Woo! That shit was dope. So I know you guys are going to ask me about that. So I posted two videos. We did, me and Mike Sears of Speaking Clout, which I'm part of. Um, we did like our own list, like top 10 RZA beats and top 10 Primo beats. We did it together and then we, you know, we put them, uh, we did that list. So definitely check that out. And we also did the recap of the battle. So I thought that was pretty dope. All right. So, oh, and our uh, recipes to Tweety Bird Low, he died. Um, I think last week he died. Um, it was confirmed by, uh, I'm friends with the, the producer, um, DJ Sparkle, who did, um, the 187 Ride By um, song on that album. Uh, no, the self-titled track, he did the beat for that. And I think like two of the beats on that album, uh, recipes to him. Um, yeah, this is some footage, it was crazy. And um, shout out to Grimy Rapper, one of my friends on Facebook. He actually confirmed it too. Um, so yeah, um, but enough of that, you know, recipes to him. Hope everybody's staying safe out there so far. You know, practice social distancing, you know what I mean? But most importantly, take your vitamins. The mask only do but so much, you know what I mean? But without further ado, enough of that. Um, I'm going to call this the New Year's edition. Um, the reason why is because I went to Tampa um, for New Year's. I went for New Year's Day. I didn't go to New Year's Eve because I had to work New Year's Eve. But the next day, I actually went to Tampa, you know, showing my boys and his girl and stuff like that. So, um yeah, so I went over there, and, um, you know, the day that I left Tampa, I was like, you know what, let me go dig it. And I found a spot that was out there and um, bought some CDs, man. So I figured I'd just show you guys what I got, all right? Um, we got sugar water. Uh, all right. Without further ado, I'll show you guys the first album. First album is Speech. But it's a self-titled album, Speech, released in 1996. Uh, Speech, you guys know he's the the um, de facto leader of uh, Arrested Development, which I'm not really a fan of them like that. They're okay. They kind of hit and miss. You know what I mean? They came out with, um, you know, at the time, they came out only two albums as a group. Um, three years, five months, two days, something like that. You guys know what I'm trying to say. You know, no for singers like Mr. Wendell, Tennessee, and uh, people every day was like, I can't fucking say I fucking hate that song, even to this day. But um, Tennessee is dope. The, the Showbiz remix is dope. And then you had the second album, um, um, Zingaman Abduli, I think that's how you pronounce it. That crazy, weird title. But anyways, um, dropped that. Uh, no for singers like Ease My Mind. I like the Primo remix better. Um, United Front, and a couple other songs. That, that was... Uh, it was very hard to listen to. I couldn't really enjoy that. But um, again, with this album, um, it's pretty much in the same vein as the first two albums. You know what I mean? It's just a little bit more updated as far as like 1996 um, has, um, has to say, has to offer. Um, Production-wise, it kind of reminds me like a mixture, of, like a hybrid of Tribe Called Quest and Roots, but not in a good way. It's like it's a attempt to sound like them, but it's just... It was okay. Um, there were some songs I did like. I like um, Impregnated Tidbits of Dope Hits, long ass title. Um, Insomnia song was pretty cool. Uh, Poor Little Music Boy was dope. And uh, Running Wild, those are like the only songs I like from this album. Um, you know, pretty much he talks about, you know, you know, the ills of life, you know, how to survive, you know, just like motivational type of tracks and stuff like that. So. This is okay, you know. I, I bought it was a blind buy, not a blind buy, but I was like, figured it's not something you see every day. So I'm like, you know what? Let me pick this up. 1996 speech from self inside. Um, that's so excuse me from um, rest of development. I was like, you know what? Let me pick it up. But um, yeah, this is speech self titled album released in 1996 out of print, and it wasn't it wasn't expensive. I think I paid like four bucks for that. So. All right, next album is a speech with his third album. <coughs> Excuse me, Spiritual People. This is released in uh, 2002. Um, it says 2000, but then 
Um, other parts of it says 2002, so I'm gonna go with 2002. This is his third album. Um, not as good as the first album, but it's okay. Um, not too much to it. You guys know about speech. You guys know what you're getting yourself into. Um, I like songs like the subtitle track "Spiritual People." Uh, brother, speech was pretty good. Cool, was pretty cool. Um, "Lay My Own Funeral." Those are like the only songs I like. Um, in this album, he tried to go. It, you could tell like he was kind of going for that MTV crowd, and I had like a like more pop appeal to it. I I just wasn't feeling it, but um. It's okay, not my, my not my thing, but uh, yeah, speech, spiritual people, this is released in two thousand two. All right, next album. I'm so happy that I got this album. I've been trying to get this album for years. I have their first two albums, but I'm glad I finally had their album. Um, have this album. I've been trying to get it for years. It's been hard to find. It's been, at least here in Florida, but I know probably everywhere else, like you know California and. You know, uh, major cities, it'd be easy to find, but Florida, not so much. But um, it is uh, Porter's Head with their third album, third, at least in 2008. I fucking love this album. I've been trying to get this album for years, like I said before. This is this is a masterpiece of an album. Kind of hard to tell to say which is my favorite album. Probably the self-titled album from 97, the second album. I actually enjoyed that album a lot, but this is actually pretty good, too. Uh, Porter said, you guys should know who they are. For those that don't know, um, they're uh, considered to be a uh, trip hop, even though they don't like that term themselves. Yeah, they don't like that term trip hop because, you know, it's kind of like, you know, people don't like being pigeonholed to a certain um, genre, but it is what it is. Uh, trip hop, you know, it's kind of like hip hop mixed with like electronic music, that kind of thing. You know, um, it but it could be like a hybrid of other things, but um, hip hop is definitely um a big factor, at least on 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 some um trip hop acts, that kind of thing, like you know, like Porter's Head, uh, Massive Attack, uh, DJ Crush, you know, people like that. But um, yeah, um, pretty good. I really enjoyed this album. Um, I remember back in the two thousand eight when this album came out, I was at Guitar Center. At the time, I didn't have this keyboard. I was, you know, still learning like about gear and you know things like that, and um, you know, knowing like looking for, like stuff to get, you know, turntables and you know things like that. And I remember I heard the song Threads. I heard it playing in the background. And they were playing in the speakers. I was like, Yo, what is that? I was like, Yeah, that's Porter's Head. I'm like, Yo, I know about Porter's Head. Yeah, this is their new album. Um, I was like, Yo, this shit is dope. So. I ended up downloading the album and then it's like my like, oh, god man like I need a physical copy, but at the time it was very hard to find. So I then I finally found it, like I said, when I went to Tampa and I really, really enjoyed this album, man. I really enjoyed that. Um I know Sounds was a single. Um was well, Machine Gun was a single as well. I think Machine Gun was like the biggest single, excuse me, off the album. You know what I mean? I'm not too crazy about Machine Gun. But my favorite songs on the album are um, Silence. I love that. The way to start the album. Um, Hunter was pretty good. Plastic. Uh, Small. Love that joint. Magic Doors and Threats. Those are my favorite songs of the album. This is a great album. Um, you know, with this album, they were kind of, like, again, they were trying to stray away from that whole trip hop sound, you know, um, compared to the first two albums. That's one thing about them. They never make the same album twice. They always make one album and they move on and um i think right after um 2000 1997 um they actually um stopped making music you know they were kind of uninspired i think uh jeff barrows uh he was kind of going through um a divorce with his wife um beth um i forgot beth uh, i forgot her full name but beth she um i think she uh she dropped the thing like a solo album, you know what I mean? And then like Adrian Nutley, he did like project here and there from like with other people, things like that. But um they try to like kind of stray away from that um um that trip hop sound, whatever. And um yeah, and you know, like I said, they kind of like they were uninspired because they didn't know what to like make. Like anytime like they would make music, it would always sound like the same. 
you know, like the same music from before, and they were kind of getting tired of that. So, and then lo and behold, they dropped this album 11 years later after 1997. And man, great, great, great album. I really highly enjoyed this album, man. I highly recommend it. Very dope shit. All right, next album is a soundtrack. <laughs> I'm glad I got it, man. But let me get a sort of water. Uh, it is a. Uh, Cash Money Millionaires with uh, Wallace Blocking, released in uh, 1999. Fucking love this album. This shit is dope, son. This shit is that real ignorant shit, man. That real ratchet shit. You don't know if he's like to say ratchet. You know, these young kids shit. Um, really, really, really dope album, man. Really solid, man. I really enjoyed that. You like that, that drug transactions, murder, prostitution. It's all in one CD. And this is it right here. Um, obviously, this is a soundtrack. Um, the soundtrack to the movie Ball is blocking, um, which I'm pretty sure you can find on YouTube. Um, I remember my boy A or uh, Aaron. Um, he um, he had the tape, the VHS. This is before DVDs. This was like ninety nine, two thousand. He, I don't think he had the the retail version. I think he had the bootleg version of the movie. And um, yo, like the quality was like really, really bad, but it was dope, man. It was like it was watchable. It was really dope. It was raw. Like, um, there was a scene where, like, um, I forgot who it was, but some dude was getting his dick sucked, and he actually saw his dick, and you see the girl sucking him off. Like, it was crazy. Like, holy shit. I feel like we watched this, so, like, real raw, authentic type shit, some, like, videotape type shit. And the scene where you see Lil Wayne um, hiding from the cops in the, in the bodega, he's he, he's hiding in the, in the freezer. Yo, I thought that was so funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> Pretty dope shit right here. Um... Uh, favorite songs of the album, I like I like Family Affair with Juju G K, pretty dope shit right there. Uh, Rover Truck, uh, Juvenile, that was pretty dope. Uh, Project Bitch, that was like a single of the album. Um, Ball and G's with uh, April M J G, that was pretty solid. Uh, Thug It Out with B G, whoo, B G and Juvenile, those, those are my favorite members of Cash Money. Um, what you gonna do with Nas and Gravehearts, which is kind of weird, but it actually worked. It actually pretty sound pretty good. But it kind of explains like their down south influence when they did the Bravehearted album because that album sucked. So I think with this album, they kind of like carried on. It kind of never left that sound and it brought it to their album. This just wasn't that good. But with this one, it was actually pretty good. Um, Calling Me Killer with Lil Wayne. I'm not the biggest Lil Wayne fan, but he actually delivered on this track. He actually did this thing. Um, I Gotta Go with TQ. Dope, dope, dope singer. Pretty dope. His first album, I forgot the name of it, from 98. Oh my god, that West Side joint. Whew, she was hard. Um, whatever with baby lack and stone. That was pretty cool. Let us stunt. Uh Milk and Honey, Mac 10, and Comrades, dope shit. Uptown with Turk. Um, Win or Lose Rapping for T. Yeah, this whole this whole soundtrack is dope, man. I highly recommend it. I prefer this over this whole trap shit that people were listening to. This is that bounce music, you know what I mean? And um, shout out to Manny Fresh, man. But that 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 battle was whack, yo. You could have you could have delved you could have delved like could have delved deeper in your catalog. You could have done stuff in this album. You could have done like the album cuts from, like BG's Chopper City, you know, Soldier Rags. You know the the um, it's all about you, like joints like that, man. But you played the you played the safe, man. You was playing the the hits, and it's like no, nah, my nigga. But yeah. Ball is blocking, Cash Money Millionaires, released in, um, released in 1999. Dope shit. No, excuse me, 2000. This was released in 2000. Excuse me. All right, next album is uh, Ronnie O and Joe, Joe Cooley, Three the Hard Way. This is released in 1990. I believe this is their second album, I want to say. Second or third, but this came out in 1990. Um, they're from Compton. Um, yeah, they're from Compton. You know, at the time they weren't really making the um, traditional West Coast music. Their style was more like Miami bass music. And then, from what I read, like uh, their music was actually more popular down south, like in you know South Florida here, um, compared to back home in Compton, which is you know kind of crazy, you know. But um, this was pretty cool. It was like a mixture of like. Um, Traditional hip hop, like MC, DJ type shit, and um, you know, Miami bass music. Um, the songs I do like, I like Three the Hard Way. Um, 
no, excuse me. Um, when the beat comes in, that was pretty cool. Um, let's see what else. Uh, when he plays, we're gonna kick it. Fun, 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 and beat blaster. Those are the only songs I actually like from this album. Um, pretty cool, but I do want to get their um, 1993 album, Fucking New York, because you know that whole Tim Dog, a recipe's a Tim Dog. Um, that whole you know controversy with the fuck Compton and then everybody but their mother and the dog from Cali was going at you know Tim Dog. So DJ Quick, MC Ren, NWA, and all those cats. So, but yeah, um, so this is Ronnie Cooley, Ronnie O and Joe Cooley, at least in 1990. Pretty cool, decent. All right, next album. It's an album I already have, but um, I lost the case, you know, like when I moved down here to New York. I do have the CD and booklet, but that's just not the case. So I had to rebuy it. And it is uh, Fuji's with uh, uh, when they were known as the Translated Crew um, with a Blunder of Reality. This was released in 1994. Um, man, this album, man. Woo! Everybody in the money knows about this album. This album is really not that good. But um, I do have to do a review on this album, so I'm gonna like properly listen to the album and give you guys a proper review because I I already did a review on the score, which is a masterpiece. So it's like this album was like what the fuck, but then we came with scores like a whole different group. You know what I mean? It's crazy. But um, yeah, you know for singles like vocab, nappy heads. Uh, I think Booth Back was a single as well. Um, but the nappy heads remix, who the Salam Remy joint. That's a summer. That's a summer classic right there. I'm, um, I used to hear that all the time on the radio. Like on, in the summertime, it was ninety four and ninety five. Like I always hear that song. I love that beat. But yeah, man, dope shit right here. Really solid. Really solid song right here. But this album, uh, not crazy. But um, definitely expect a review on this um in the near future. So definitely stay tuned for that. So this is uh Fuji's Translated Crew, Translated Crew. Um, Blood on Reality, released in 1994. Okay, sugar water. Ah. All right. Next album. <laughs> you guys going to be like, yo, what the fuck are you thinking? But you know what? I, I had to give these guys a chance, you know what I mean? Because um, I like their movies, but their music, eh, not so much. But I was like, you know what? Let me give this these guys a chance. Uh, Kid and Play with their third album, uh, Face the Nation. This was released in uh, 1991. Uh, this was the last album they ever dropped together as a group. Um, they pretty much stopped recording, with the exception of um, House Party 3. They do have, like I think, like five or six songs on that soundtrack. That soundtrack is actually pretty good. Um, definitely need to get my hands on that. But that's out of print. It's hard to find. But... Um, but it's not expensive, so I'll probably it's just probably getting online. But um, this album right here, I actually enjoyed this album. Really solid, really solid song um, album. I really enjoyed that. Um, the production is pretty good. I mean, you got production by Pete Rock, um, a couple other people. I can't name on top of my head, but Pete Rock definitely uh, uh, plays a big part of um, a couple of the songs. Um, I like the songs. Uh, it's all right, y'all. That was pretty dope. Um, what else? What else? Back on Wax is pretty good. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, got a good thing. Got a good thing going on. Next question. I believe next question was a single. Uh, Face the Nate. Four play was pretty dope. Slipping. Ain't gonna, ain't gonna hurt nobody. Give it here. Bills at the doors. Toe to toe. Fat RB remix. Yeah, the production's solid, man. It definitely captures 1999 to a, 1991 to a T. So it's really, really solid, man. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed that. You know, they're not the best MCs in the world, but the, the beats definitely carry them. And you know, this is a you know, the house party two era is when the album came out. I mean, that movie came out, which was not my favorite out of the installation. Uh, mine's is you know, I was the first one and I actually enjoyed um part three. I know most people don't like house party three. I actually enjoyed that. I thought that was actually pretty good. So, but that's just me. But yeah, definitely give this album a, a, a chance. Pretty dope. Um, like I said, the 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 rapping, the MCing is not the greatest, but it's childable. You know what I mean? And you know the production definitely helps. So, but yeah, Face the Nation, my kid and play, released in 1991. Um, like I said, this is like the last and final album they recorded as a group. 
And uh, still in the 1991 um, realm of things, we're going to go with a Sussy Sonic with Blood, Sweat, and No Tears. This was released in 1991. Um, yeah, this is uh, their last song that they dropped as a group. Um, they broke up, and then they, you know, they started doing different ventures. Um, you know, the group consists of, I want to say, I know it's over five um, people. I know it's Prince Paul, um, Fuquan, um, Daddy O, Wise. Um, I can't think of it on top of my head, but those are the people that I remember. But um, yeah, this is a pretty solid album, man. I really enjoyed this, man. I really enjoyed that. As you see, it's so wrapped. Um, but I did listen to it through YouTube, that kind of thing. Um, I like the song "No BS Allowed." Um, you the man was pretty good. Self-titled track, uh, "Bless for the No Tears." Um, so let the let the fun begin. Um, so let the fun begin. Oh, that was pretty good. Uh, Ghetto is the world was pretty good. Your mother has green tea. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Um, Heaven help the MF. The MFs took place in New York, and Paul's a sucker. Um, those are the songs I like on the album. Um, you know, Prince Paul. You know, you know he's part of De La Soul. Produced their first three albums. Um, then you end up doing the Grave Diggers. Fuquan followed suit. Rolled with Prince Paul. End up doing the Grave Diggers. Daddy O, um, you know, he uh, pretty much was responsible for the careers of like Biggie, um, you know, Junior Mafia and that kind of thing, and uh, you know, the whole audio tool and that kind of thing. So he was doing that. Um, Fuquan, like I said, you know, he was doing uh, you know, the Grave Diggers, you know, he was the I believe he was the uh, the gatekeeper, I think that was his name, the Grave Diggers, don't remember, but yeah, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Pretty cool, pretty cool album. I like it. Definitely, uh, when you think of 1991, this is definitely albums that you know doesn't really get talked about. Um, I think it's, this is this is actually my favorite album for them. Um, I heard a couple of the other albums, um, you know, uh, with songs like Talk, Talking That Jazz and things like that. Sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. But um, I actually enjoy this album. Really dope. Uh, this is uh. Blood, Sweat, and No Tears was released in uh, 1991. All right, next album. <laughs> We're going to go to L.A. we go with uh, Jurassic 5, uh, J5, um, the LP. Uh, this is the deluxe edition, the reissue. Uh, this actually came out in 1997, but this version came out in 2008. Um, it comes with the actual CD. It comes with, um, with 13 songs. And then the second, the second disc, Excuse me. The second disc, it comes with like the B sides and songs that didn't make the album, like you know songs that didn't make you know that was on the cutting room floor around that time and things of that nature. Oh, before I forget, with uh, Sister Sonic, um, shout out to Chopped Herring um, out of the UK. Uh, they actually dropped an EP called People in the Neighborhood. Um, it's songs that they recorded between 1991 and 1994 as a group. So um, songs like during the making this album and a little bit after after this album came out so definitely check it out it's actually on youtube unfortunately it's only on vinyls not on cd um but you can find it on youtube so um definitely check it out just had to throw it out there forgot to mention that um but getting back to jurassic five this is a debut album like i said it came out in 97 but this is the deluxe edition which came out 2008 so you know how to cop I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of like deluxe editions so you guys know that um like i said this um this tool comes like i said with like the unreleased joints that came out around that that they recorded around that time that kind of thing it comes with a dvd it comes with like like um a kind of like a performance and like it comes with a video and things like that i didn't watch the video i didn't watch the dvd yet but um never got around to it um this was okay um i like the songs in the flesh uh ju lesson six the lecture um I know Concrete School Yo was the single of the album. That was okay. I wasn't too crazy about that. Um, Without a Doubt was pretty dope. Uh, Long Road to Glory and Ghetto Diplomat. Those are the only songs I like. You know, when I think of J5 or Jurassic 5, they, they to me are like the, 
West Coast version of De La Soul. Um, that's the best way I could describe them. If you guys never heard of Jerry Jurassic Five? If you like De La Soul, you'll definitely enjoy them. Um, not as good as De La Soul, but like just like the whole charismatic, you know, um, stress free, you know, happy, not happy. I don't want to say happy go lucky, but you know, just like they're just chilling. They, you know, they, you know, they all about life and about you know partying, but they they serious at the same time. So, but um, yeah, Jurassic Five, J Five, the LP. This is the deluxe edition. This came out in uh, 1997, released in 2008. All right. All right. Uh, next album. <sighs> it is uh, Fab, uh, Fabulous with a uh, Ghetto Fabulous. This is released, 2000, released in 2001. Everybody should know uh, Fabulous, but for those who don't know, MC from um, Best Side Brooklyn, Brevoort Projects. Um, no his affiliation with DJ Clue, the whole Does It Storm. At the time when he first came out, um, he was known for like his appearance of DJ Cool mixtapes. Uh, you know, he's known as Fabulous Sport. Um, he was actually featured on uh, Professional, um, the first one that came out in '98, dope album too. Uh, I forgot the song. I think it was like Fantastic Four. I think he was on that song. I think that was the song he was on. But then people was going crazy over that, and he's appearing on mixtapes and things like that. And then because of the hype, he ended up dropping this album right here. And um, funny story with this album is that it it, it was actually released on 9-11, the same day that the Twin Towers went down, but it also um, the same day that the Blueprint came out. And I remember that day, Fabulous was supposed to have an uh, album signing at um, Music Factory on Jamaica Avenue, but obviously that got canceled because of what happened. So um, that never happened, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah. Uh, Known for songs like uh, "Can't Deny It," um, "Keeping It Gangsta," um, you know songs like that. Um, the songs I do like from this album, I like uh, "Keeping It Gangsta," "Young," um, "Young and Holla Back." That was a single as well. That was Neptune's. Uh, One day, love that joint. That's like my favorite song of the album. Um, Get smart, my be easy, the bad guy, and gotta be thug. But it's like those songs are cool. But it's like, it's just like very poppy. It's very like shiny, you know. It's like, it's very like bad boy esque, you know what I mean? Because that was a lot of people's complaints at the time with um Fabulous, um because a lot of people were saying that um, you know, he sounded too much like uh Mace, you know what I mean? So it was like one of those things, and I could definitely see that. But um, this was uh, it was okay. You know, it's not really the best thing in the world. Um, unless you're a fat fan, I would you know skip this. But um, he can spit. The dude can spit. But his albums suck. Like he does not make good albums. That's just my personal opinion. My first song, like I said, is One Day. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. But this is our uh, Ghetto Fabulous by Fabulous, released in like in 2001. And I remember when niggas was fucking rock the the. They would rock the bandanas out of paper towel. It was like, my dude, like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I seen cats do that before in New York. It was crazy, but, you know, it's what it is. Ghetto Fabulous by Fabulous in 2001. Next album, we're going to go back to 1991. We're going to go to uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince with our home base. I believe this is their fourth album, released in 1991. Uh, everybody knows the biggest single of the album is uh, Summertime, which I'm kind of like over that song. It's pretty cool. It's a cool song. You know, it's a summer vibe song, obviously. You know, he's trying to be on his whole Rock Kim flow type of thing. Jack Rock Kim, the way he flowed and shit. But, you know, it was it was all right, man. Um, I like the song A Dog is a Dog. That was pretty cool. Uh, Caught in the Middle. I believe that was a single, too. Um Trapped on the dance floor. Those are like the only songs I like from this album. Everything else I wasn't really too crazy about. Still to this day, my favorite album for them is uh, Red Cold Red that came out in 93. I know a lot of people hate on that album, but I actually prefer that because he actually has some dope production. He actually spits on that album. He has like, like real boom bap, put in your face production. And then you have Pete Rock. You have, uh, you know, obviously DJ Jazzy Jeff. He stepped it up in the production. Um, you know, you have Dallas Austin, you know, people like that. This album, not so much. But um, Home Base by DJ Jazzy Jeff and uh, Fresh Prince released in 1981. All right. Uh, next album, I guess, with the Water. 
uh, next album uh, is PM Dawn with their second album, the Bliss album, released in 1993. Everybody knows about Prince B, Prince, uh, PM Dawn, Prince B, recipes of Prince B. Um, he died uh, about four years ago due to um, complications of diabetes. So he had a, he was fighting that for a while, and of um, that of uh, renal disease, like I said. Due to complications of him having diabetes and stuff, so, but um, anyways, getting back to this album, really enjoyed this album. I had I have their first album, the Utopian album. It's a long ass album. I just call that Utopian album. This album, I guess, is called the Bliss. Really enjoyed, um, really enjoyed this album. It's like a nice follow up from the first album from '91. I really enjoyed that. Um, when I think of PM Dawn, I think of hip hop mixed with new age music because it definitely has like an atmospheric feel to it and their music always had that feel and they were very ahead of their time with the production i really enjoyed that um i like the songs on when midnight signs when midnight size that was pretty good um classic was pretty good um the ways of the wind about nothing for the love of destiny was pretty dope um norwegian wood was pretty good um, Beyond Infinite Perfections, Looking Through Patient Eyes, Filthy Rich, um, The Nocturnals in the House, um, that was pretty good. And um, the song When It When It Rains, When It's Raining Cats and Dogs, that was actually pretty yeah, one second. Yeah, that was actually pretty good, man. Um, really, really good album. Um, little tidbit with this album. Uh, be careful when you get, um, okay, there's two versions. This is the OG pressing with the so on and so on. Um, the 97 reissue um, don't have that song. Let's do this as uh, sample clearances. So I do I then have to throw that out there. The so on and so on, which was not the best song in the world, but it's decent, but it's not the best in the world. But if you're like a you know a hip hop nerd and you know like a hip hop nerd like me, and you you know you want to get the OG and like you want to have everything in its original form. Then get the 93 version. So just be careful. Like I said, they reissued this album in 97. The 97 does not have so on and so on. So it's just had to throw that out there. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed this album. It was a dope listen. Um, I could just imagine you play this in the car, it bumps in the web. This has like a nice sound. Like again, the production on this album is so ahead of its time. It's like it's very atmospheric. And for 93, it's pretty dope. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, the Bliss album, this is released in uh 1993. Pretty dope. All right, next album is the third album, PM Dawn, with uh Jesus Wept. This is released in 1995, two years later after the Bliss album. Another dope album. Um, with this album, this is like a little bit more religious, but it's still in the same vein as the first two albums. But it just kind of goes more spiritual with this album. Really enjoyed that. Um, I like the, I like the, the my favorite songs of the album. I like uh, my own my own personal gravity. That was pretty good. Um, I'll be waiting for you. Forever damage was pretty good. Um, the puppet show. Why guy who loves you. Uh, Mouse from anything. A lifetime. Sometimes I miss you so much. Yeah, those are pretty dope songs, man. I really enjoyed that, man. I'm um, definitely give PM doing a chance. I know he gets. I know. They get a lot of flag, you know, being soft. Like, what I like to compare, you know, he would have been considered like the, the the Drake of that time. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, just because of the production of the of the music and stuff, because they were like more. They and then with this album, um, they didn't rap. They were singing. They were they didn't. They Prince B was singing on this album, whereas the first two albums he was like he was like doing a hybrid of singing and rapping but with this one he didn't do that he was singing throughout the whole album so um that was something a little different to look out for but yeah pretty good man i really enjoyed that definitely need to get more of the albums but i'm just glad to have the first three albums you know what i mean so like i said rest in peace of prince b he lost his life back in 2016 due to diabetes so um but yeah pm dawn with jesus rap is released in um, 1995 all right, next album. Whew, I'm so glad I got this album. I've been trying to get this album for a while, but I was <coughs> excuse me, but I, it wasn't like one of those things like like I was in wrestling. When I get it, I get it. It's one of, one of those things. 
Um, it is uh, Percy P with Perseverance, man. This is released in 2007. Percy P, man. Whoo! This nigga is... Yo, this dude is that dude. He's the truth. This guy right here, for those who don't know, legendary Bronx MC from the Bronx. Uh, he's known for um, him battling um, Blue Off Finesse back in 1989. Um, there's like a, there's like a, there's video of it, but like the quality of it, it's like really bad because, you know, it's like the, the camcorders, you know, that did the, v, excuse me, that the VHS. So it wasn't really the best quality. But they ended up doing like a um, like a remake. Like they did like a video version, like you know, like like an actual music video, like a kind of like from I forgot the the thing is like from a movie. I forgot the name of it. I think it's like SBX, something like that with Party Audi and all those cats. But um, SBX, the a Day in the Life in the Bronx, I think it's called. Um, they actually did like a like a kind of like a musical form of that like musical part of the movie. But anyways, um. They did that. That was pretty cool. And then, like in 1992, Blue Streets went on the Yes You Yes You May remix, which you know which was an underground classic. Everybody knows that song. But you know, people like you know they were trying to find like you know an album. They were for an album. They never came out with an album. Um, then he came out with a compilation album. I forgot the name of it. Came out, I believe, in the mid 2000s. I believe. And I don't have that. That was that one was pretty good. But I don't throughout the, the 90s and the 2000s, he was doing out like you know 12 inches and things like that. Fast forward to 2007, he dropped this masterpiece of an album. Uh, the whole album was done by Mad Lib of um, Blue Pack fame. Everybody knows about Mad Lib. Shout out to Mad Lib. Um, this is such a great album. I really enjoyed this album. Um, I know the single of the album, I believe, was uh, Put It On The Line. There was a video for that. That, one, that song was pretty good. Um, my first songs of the album are The Hand That Leads You, The Man to Praise, uh, Watch Yourself with Vinnie Paz and Gil Guilty Simpson. Woo! That was dope. Uh, Two Brothers from the Gutter with Diamond D. That was pretty good. Um, another dope song, uh, No Time for Jokes featuring Charlie Tuna of, um, of, uh, Jurassic Five fame. Uh, that was pretty dope. Last of the Greats featuring Chris Bowe. Um, put it on the line, like I mentioned before. The Dirt and the Filth with Aesop Rock. Woo! That's probably my favorite song of the album. Yo, that, whew, that shit goes hard. That should have been a video for that. That's just my personal opinion. Um, that was pretty good. Um, Raw Heat 45, that's, who that shit goes hard. And The Lady Behind Me, that was pretty good, man. This whole album is fucking dope. Oh, uh, the Raw Heat 45. Um, I believe that beat was also used by MF Doom on the Oom um Food album that came out 04. But Percy P used it better, in my personal opinion. That's just me. I know I know that's sacrilegious to say, but you know, MF Doom for me is kind of hit and miss. So, but yeah, um, yeah, Percy P, pretty good. Really enjoyed that. I'm so glad I got this album. Pretty dope. All right, next album. So glad I got my hands on this. Been trying to get this out for years. Um, I'm so glad I got it. Uh, cool Keith with uh, Black Elvis, Lost in Space, released in 1999. Really dope album. Really solid album. Really enjoyed this album. This was probably like, the more expensive one, the more pricey one out of the bunch. Everything else was like four, like three ninety nine, five ninety nine, uh, two ninety nine, that kind of thing. But yeah, this album right here, I really enjoyed. I love this album. So glad I got it. Um, I've always had it downloaded, you know, digitally, but never had a copy, man. And um, the story with this album is that um, the the whole plan was for him to release this um the same day as our uh, Fresh Come First Serve, and this album actually got pushed back. So um, which was pretty smart because I think if they released it um both at the same time, same time, I don't think um, you know, it would, I don't think he would have got this. I don't think the album. I don't think this album would have had the same shine as uh, First Come First Serve. That's just my personal opinion. So it was kind of smart for um, Roughhouse Columbia, which he's he was under at the time. Um, Columbia Records, Roughhouse, um, home of uh, Cypress Hill, um, you know, Fuji's and that kind of thing. But um, anyways, um, yeah, 
pretty dope album. I really enjoyed that. Um, one thing about this album is the fact that this was the first album that Cool Keep did all the production. Because, you know, usually he has Dan the Automator and um, Cutmaster Kurt. Even though Cutmaster Kurt on the credits, you know, he said that um, you know, he, was doing the, he was doing the drum programming. It says that he did the drum programming, but the production was actually done by Cool Keep. So, um, yeah, um, Lutter's Joint, um, Living Natural was the single of the album. Uh, there is a video for that you can find on YouTube. I believe it was on, I believe they used to play it on MTV, um, memory serves correctly. But um, Lost in Space, Rock, Rocks in the Battlefield, Living Astro is pretty good. Um, Living Astro, Lost in Space. My favorite song is Maxi Curls. I love that. Maxi Curls, yeah. Doom, doom, doom. Curls at the beta. Doom, doom, doom. Yo, that's my shit. I love that beat. It's crazy. Um, yeah, the girl, the, the girls don't like the job. That was pretty funny. Um, all the time, and I don't play. Yeah, pretty good album, man. Highly recommend it. Um, this album is a little hard to find. It's a little expensive too. It's going up in price. It's same thing with um, first come first serve. First come first serve. I got it for ten bucks on eBay last year or the year before. So I got lucky with that. With this album, it's a little bit more. It's going up in price in recent times, but um, I'm glad I enjoyed it and I've seen them live. Um, I think when have I seen them live? I think in 2018 I saw him like two years ago. Really fucking dope. I really enjoyed that. But um, yeah, Cool Cube, Black Elvis, Lost in Space, released in 1999. Dope shit. We got three more. Uh, next album. We're gonna go back to 1989. We're gonna go with our uh, Rob Bass, Incredible Bass. Uh, this was released in 1989. Uh, Rob Bass of um, Rob Bass and Easy, Easy Rock. Uh, this is a solo album, uh, Incredible Bass. Um, this was like a follow-up of their first album, It Takes Two. Everybody knows that album. So if you guys are familiar with that album, this is pretty much no different. This one's a little bit more mature compared to It Takes Two. But not it's not far. It's not far away from it. But um yeah, um this was okay. It's like party rap, that kind of thing. Braggadocio rap, that kind of thing. The songs I do like from it, uh I like rumors, that was pretty good. Hype it up, the self-titled shot, the incredible bass, and I'm outstanding. Those are the only songs I like from the album. Again, not nothing too crazy, you know, definitely, you know, typical of what you hear in 1989. I mean, there was better releases than this, but, you know, I just had to grab it, because I already have the um, It Takes Two album, so I was like, you know what, let me pick it up, and it was cheap, too, so, but yeah, um, Rob Bass with the Incredible Bass released in uh, 1989, uh, and Respects Easy Rock, he also died of diabetes as well. Alright, next album, I've been trying to get this album for years, I'm so glad I found it, I'm shocked that I actually found this shit. It is uh, My Light by DJ Crush. This was released in uh, 1997. Um, this is the US version. Um, not really crazy about the album cover. Um, actually, for, there was a Japanese version that came out in 96. It's practically the same album. I just think I think a couple of songs are not on this album. Um, let me show you guys uh, if I could show you guys it. Um, what the. Uh, Second. Yeah, so pretty much that's the co that's the album cover of the Japanese version. It's a lot better. Um, I prefer that over this out over the the US version. It definitely captures the feel of the album. That's just my personal opinion, but um. Yeah, let me just come back. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I love that verse. I love the cover for that. It definitely fits the album. Um, I mean, you got songs like uh, Shin Sakai, Sakai by Reno. He's a Japanese rapper. He's pretty good. You know, I can't understand the word he says. Um, Real um, featuring Tragic Gaddafi. That shit goes hard. Um, Pugoya, Jugoya. Uh, that was like an instrumental joint. Uh, Listen featuring Sean J. Period, Sean J. Period, dope producer, dope MC too. Um, you know Sean J. Period 
you know, he's like the in-house producer for most Def at one point. Uh, he's worked with um, you know, the Bush Babies on the second album and stuff like that. So, I um, mean, he was also part of the group um, Down South, um, Lost in Brooklyn album, Fire. Uh, Supernova with Fifth and Bundy was pretty good. Um, let's see, uh, Shinjiro with Most Deaf. Uh, Mind Games was pretty good. Light. Skin Against Skin, I love that with Deborah Anderson. Deborah on some like movie shit right there, man. But really, really dope. This is actually my favorite album from him. I do have Meso. And um, now I got this, so I'm glad I own it, man. I definitely want to get more of his early albums, like, like Strictly Turn Turbulize. Strictly Turn Turbulize. Turn Turbulize. Um, Crush, that came out like 94. I didn't get my hands on those, but those are a little hard, ex hard and expensive, hard to find. A little bit more rare and more expensive, but um, definitely will be on the hunt for those. But um, yeah, this is my light. <laughs> Excuse me, released in 1997. This is the U.S. version. The picture I show you with the moon with the eyes, that's the nine that came out in '96. Um, that's the Japanese version. That's the one I do prefer. So, um, cover wise, I I, I just wish it would have been on this one, but um. That's pretty much it. And last song of the, of the video is uh, DJ Crush with uh, Zen. Um, this is released in 2001. Um, this song was pretty good. I actually enjoyed this. Um, not as good as My Light, but um, I actually enjoyed it. Um, again, still has like that more hip hop influence to it. Um, song one was pretty good. I enjoyed that. Don't wait to shut the album. It's like, it's like instrumental, pretty dope. Uh, Zen Approach featuring Black Dota of the Roots. That was pretty dope. He does his thing on that. Uh, Danger of Love with uh, Zap Mama. That was pretty good. Um, Vision of Art featuring Company Flow. Shout out to Company Flow. Uh, Day Zen was pretty good. Uh, with Grace uh, featuring India Davenport. Dope, dope singer. Very underrated. No really hear too many people talk about her. Um, Endless Railway with a uh, Quest Love of the Roots, um, and uh, Paradise Paradise Theory. That was pretty good. And that's it, folks. I do apologize for it being long-winded, but, you know, I just want to get this out of the way. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that um, CD collection. Definitely stay tuned for more. All right. Peace.